My name is Michael Simon. I served in the United States Marine Corps from 1992 to 2008 as an infantryman. I actually signed up when I was 17, had to have my parents uh, sign the dotted line along with me. And then once we did that, uh, I was delayed for a little while and then went in two days after my 18th birthday, uh, which was quite the terrifying experience for an 18-year-old 18, 18 kid just turning 18, uh, going out on his own off to uh, San Diego to MCRD uh, for boot camp. So I went into the infantry, went to uh, the respective schools, and then my, my, my very first duty station was 29 Palms, California. And if anybody knows anything about 29 Palms, California, it's the middle of nowhere. It's a desert. Uh, we came in at night. We were late coming in, so we didn't realize where we were and how bad it was. I always saw some lights, and we came through uh, Yucca Valley and Joshua Tree, and we're like, not so bad. Came into a little town, not so bad. And then the next morning we woke up and realized, yeah, this is bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's hours from ever, everything, but it is the largest uh, training base the Marine Corps has. So it was a great opportunity to be a part of 1st Battalion, 7th Marines. Uh, Suicide Charlie was my company, which is a very unique company in itself uh, because it dates back to uh, an infamous time um, in World War II, which as a matter of fact, that anniversary has come up as well when the Suicide Charlie flag was actually, guidance was displayed in World War II uh, at Henderson Field. So it was kind of a unique experience to be part of, part of them. During my time with 1-7, uh, I went on to work uh, within 7th Marines, the regiment, and got to be uh, a driver slash aide for the regimental commander. Uh, finished out my time there. And actually, uh, this is kind of where it gets interesting. I actually got out of the Marine Corps and went back in. So I had some broken time. Uh, realized I was you know, young and I realized I'd probably make the right best decision so I ended up going back in, I ended up going back in the reserves. And that's kind of where that, that gap in my, 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 kind of my time comes into play as far as active service. I uh, went back in the reserves, went into the artillery, and it went into work in the armory. So I handled all the, the small arms weapons. Finished all my time there and had an opportunity to go back active duty, which I was fighting for the entire time I was with the unit in Julia, Illinois. Once I was able to do that, uh, I went to Quantico, Virginia for, for a short period of time. Uh, and then was able to go back to, which I don't know if it's fortunately or unfortunately, um, back to where I went to school. So I got to go back to Camp Pendleton, California, uh, became an instructor for the School of Infantry. I spent about, uh, probably about a little over three years there, and I was planning on staying there longer, and some, some mitigating cir circumstances came into play, and uh, I was given orders, and I went back to the place where it all started back to 29 Palms, California, to be a part of a very unique unit, uh, cadre, uh, regarding urban warfare and training every infantryman, every Marine Corps unit that was going into Iraq. The most unique part about it really was, honestly, is I taught at the schoolhouse. So a lot of the kids that I taught in the, in the, in the over two years of me being in the, in the, on the training side, I got to see those kids come through the training side before deployment. So these, I mean, I'd be, I'd be on, uh, you know, a training area would be doing something in, the, in the, it was a city. It was a, it was a built up city of, you know, containers. And I'd be somewhere and all of a sudden I hear, I hear my name and I I'd look around, I'm like, who's, and it's one of my, it's, it's, I call my kids. It's one of my kids. And I was like, it's just, it's a good feeling to know that they went from here and they're su successful and they get to here and you gotta make sure they're successful because this is it. So it, it's, it's kind of a twofold. It's very stressful, number one, because this is the last time these, the, these Marines you know, get to train in, in an environment where even when they die, they live. And then two, it, it gives you a good feeling that you're giving them every, every ounce of knowledge, every, every piece of uh, advice you can possibly give them before they go into the, into the, into the real world. It was really difficult to depart, and I kind of found my way into uh, the American Legion, and that was kind of my segue back into the give back and getting back around, you know, service members and you know veterans, and be able to still have that camaraderie and still live and breathe as much as you possibly could, you know, the military without being in the military. I always tell people, you know, I have two birthdays, you know, I have Marine Corps birthday and I have my own birthday. Uh, people look at me funny. That's when I say I have two birthdays. I'm like, we have two birthdays. Well, November 10th is my birthday. November 10th is when we celebrate the Marine Corps and we celebrate being a Marine. So yeah, it's, it's a second birthday to me. And it's an amazing opportunity to come alongside uh, those Marines on, those on that particular day 
because it all comes back. It all floods back. Everything floods back, uh, and it, it kind of gives you gives you goosebumps.